Hey everyone, welcome to Making Designing Holograms. For those of you who don't know what Designing Holograms is, uh, let me tell you a little bit about it. So Designing Holograms is a HoloLens 2 application that we just released on the Microsoft Store that you can get for free right now. Um, and this app actually teaches you design, uh, mixed reality design concepts uh, that are not necessarily easy to understand um, if you don't see them. Um, but it teaches you these concepts, it shows you these concepts, and it also allows you to experience them yourself. So, um, Designing Holograms came together as a bunch, uh, a collection of knowledge uh, that we have gathered during the last um, I would say like six years, maybe even more, um, starting from Holland's one knowledge that um, designers started um, uh, putting together. Um, although this application is for Holland's too, uh, all this knowledge has been like uh, bundled up in order to to allow developers and designers to accelerate their development process, um, because we know how hard it is to design for mixed reality. Um, so we put this together um, so that you could uh, learn with tips, tricks, recommendations of what to do, what not to do, um, so that you can make your apps faster without making as many mistakes as we have all made in the past. So let me uh, tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Daniel Escudero. I'm the Mixed Reality Academy Design Lead based here in San Francisco. And I joined Microsoft um, in the UK, in London, uh, around uh, four and a half years ago as part of the Mixed Reality Studios, where we would do uh, proof of concepts and prototypes for some customers um, around Europe. Um, to name of a couple, um, Airbus and Volkswagen were, were one, of, uh, one of the few. Um, and two years ago, um, as a family, we decided to move to, to San Francisco and I joined the Mixed Reality Academy. And my role um, is a bit of a mixed bag of things, but it makes it super entertaining. Um, I, I actually uh, help and teach developers how to design for mixed reality. I also uh, help, um, I contribute to the MRTK. And also I give feedback from developers back into the product so we can actually improve our products and address all of those pain points that uh, you guys might be going through. Like many of you, I used to design mobile apps, coming from a 2D design world and jumping into full on spatial computing where everything is now in the world. Apps are not confined to a 2D screen anymore, but they are kind of free and placed in the real world, interacting with real objects, completely different to what I was used to. And this is the most challenging thing about mixed reality development. Designing them can be very hard. As an example, through the last few years, we've done hackathons and workshops with customers, but there's always this ongoing problem. And that problem is design. Customers would say, I know, what the well, I know what features to include and how to get those up and running. It's code, I can follow the docs and the t tutorials, but the user experience, no idea. So many features, different input options, different scenarios and physical environments, it's overwhelming. So we decided to correct this, not only by making improvements to the design documentation, but by creating a Horlands 2 app that would let you experience best practices for mixed reality design. So let me show you exactly what designing holograms is. It's a visual experience that explains mixed reality design concepts and recommendations. It's just you and a virtual teacher taking you through demonstrations of mixed reality design concepts but from a third person perspective. And then we let you experience them in your own space. So I wanna start first with our development approach. Um, <clears throat> we did it in a very lean way uh, because we didn't know exactly what the final result was going to be. Um, 
So I want to share a bit of what of what this development process uh, looks like. So like in most projects, uh, you have your research phase. Um, in our case, uh, our research was done with customers at, at workshops um, um, and interviews like one-on-ones, just listening to what their pain points were, wh where they were struggling. Um, and we would dive deeper into more like, uh, like follow-up questions in order to really understand what their problems were. Um, in this case, uh, the, the, the insights um, were all around design, like what uh, all the pain points that they had in terms of like how, how, how to address user experience, how to design for it, how to um, take into account different variables um, so that my application can work in different scenarios. You might have a different approach, of course, for your research, but this is the one that we, we actually uh, used. And then, of course, once we have our research ready, we, we start the plan phase. And in this case, we, we, we knew what we wanted to teach thanks to the, to the research. So we, we made a quick draft of the content that we were, we were going to include um, and brainstormed around how we would deliver this, how we would show this content. And that's when the feasibility um, phase comes in where you need to actually try and and figure out if what you have in mind is is actually something that you can do uh, not technically speaking necessarily but also in terms of like time and budget can we actually can can we actually deliver this feature inside this app or this this list of features and of course according to that you will have a certain list of assets uh, like 3d assets uh, voice, video, um, you, you name it. It could be very, many different kinds of assets, but you have to plan out in order for you to, to actually um, uh, measure and be able to prioritize um, your features, of course. So once you have your plan, um, we we start the, the building process. So we already know what content is gonna be inside. So the first thing that we try to do is build the application from start to finish. That means from the minute that the, the user launches the app to the minute that they finish um, the content or they are done with their task. So the, the technique here is basically to build your app as fast as possible. OK, and this means being super scrappy about the first iteration. And by scrappy, I mean, like, do not worry unless it's super necessary, of course, but do not worry about like super polished code. We want to make sure that the application makes sense from start to finish, OK, that the flow makes sense from start to finish. And this you actually do it by um, using like break gray boxing, which means like just use boxes um, spheres, cones, very, very cheap assets inside your app that will allow you to kind of experience it in a very rough form, but you will get a sense of, hmm, actually this does work. This does not make sense here. Um, actually this step of the flow has to change and you can iterate super fast uh, by doing this and not spending huge amounts of money on actually building the first iteration, which might not make sense at all. And while you do this, uh, you'll bump into, and you might have already have this in your plan, but you might have uh, to, to resolve a few questions uh, about certain tech that you might need to, to create or things that you're not sure exactly how you're gonna solve them. And for this, uh, I've included the, the last item on the build phase, which is the prototyping phase. And prototyping um, doesn't necessarily mean that I'm building a prototype app. No, it means like I'm building a very small part of the application uh, to see if I can answer or resolve this issue with. So a prototype can be about one certain feature to see if it works or if I have to approach it in a different way. Um, and you can, can have many of these, and these will be uh, in certain parts of your flow, but you have to make sure that those prototypes are made while you start uh, building your main flow. So once you have your, your first iteration of, of the, the entire flow, uh, you should test and test 
with not necessarily just your own team, yourself, like teammates, but ideally other people who have not experienced the app, and ideally without giving them many instructions. Like in the real world, you won't be able to give people instructions. Um, so you want them to you want them to, to experience it as if it was a final product. Of course, warning them that, hey, this is a gray box version, like the final assets won't be there, but um, it will help us understand if we are doing things correctly. And you can test, of course, many different things. So for example, the flow, of course, like is the, is the flow uh, appropriate? Does it make sense? Does the timing work? Do I achieve my task in, in the most um, optimized uh, time? Uh, and also, does my prototype actually work? Or my few prototypes that I have in my flow, do they actually work? Or, sh or could I uh, improve them somehow? So once you test, you reach your, your initial conclusions of what you should, you should address. Um, you kind of go back to the next step, but it's kind of different. You, you continue building, continue building fast, but as you move forward, you start replacing those gray boxes with real assets. They might not be the last versions or the final polished versions, but, but still you need to start replacing them. So the next test is closer to what you would actually deliver to a customer. So in this phase, okay, you finish your next iteration. Um, and again, you go back to testing, testing again, if the flow still makes sense, if, if it has improved, if, if your uh, users can achieve their tasks faster or, or in a better way or in a more uh, natural way and continue to iterate over your prototypes and finally define if the, that prototype is the one that you wanna leave in there. And you continue these two last phases um, until you decide or until your budget run, runs out or until time runs out. But that way you can iterate until you reach your hard stop, uh, whatever that hard stop actually means. But this allows you to kind of like focus on different areas. Um, maybe you're doing some, some work for a customer um, and, th and this can allow them to choose what features to focus on and what to iterate on and what to polish on. So if you've tried designing holograms, you might notice that, that there's one, this one place which is very characteristic of it, which is what we call the dollhouse. And this is a virtual environment that we use throughout the app. Extremely protagonistic, um, a very important asset. So we, need, we needed to make sure that it would work great and in every single scenario. And this is a dollhouse. It's an 80 by 60 by 40 centimeter miniature room that contains the basic elements that most rooms contain, like walls, lamps, furniture, a table, a TV, a chair, a rug, like kind of like the standard things that you would find in a living room. Think of it as a small demo room to show all sorts of mixed reality things. Before the dollhouse actually came to be this, this uh, super characteristic part of, of this application, um, we thought of this virtual room being one-to-one -one scale. And we thought it would be amazing because like you're looking almost at a real life teacher seeing everything that they are seeing. Um, but this brought in a couple problems. First of all, like most developers will run this app in offices or rooms smaller than this demo room that we're showing you right now. So it wouldn't fit. And it's very weird to see a virtual room overlaid over a completely different room that might be in different, different, not only in terms of what furniture you have in there, but the actual scale of it. And it's extremely odd. Um, also remember that these displays are additive, meaning that the entire virtual em environment will be overlaid over whatever room the user's in. So it can get really confusing with like two tables, uh, maybe double couches and other messy stuff. <clears throat> and the worst part is that this virtual environment would be heavily constrained by the field of view. Despite the field of view of the Honan Su being fantastic, it's still very different 
um, to not be able to see everything at the same time, right? So we tried something different. We tried this mini version and the result was a fantastic God view of a realistic room where you could see everything that was going on from any angle and all at the same time. What you're seeing here is exactly the same content that I was showing you before, but all together in this miniature version at a one to 10 scale. And the part that surprises me most is that testers, as soon as we, we tried this out, they found it so much more immersive to see the small version that they never toggled back into the one-to-one -one scale. So we decided to actually delete the whole one-to-one -one version and avoid any extra work required to adapt UI and other aspects of the app that need to change according to the mode you're in. So we stuck with the dollhouse at one to 10 scale. But creating the best solution isn't necessarily the easiest option, of course. So there were a few challenges we had to face, and I'd like to show you some of those challenges. So one of the challenges was around text, like where do we place titles, different segment titles and descriptions? So we tried different approaches where we would put the title on top of the dollhouse, uh, but this was this was a problem because most people were, were like almost sticking their heads inside the dollhouse to see the details, so they would miss the title. Below was okay that uh, that actually uh, works well, but the control panel we we wanted the control panel to be um, below head height, so it would kind of be in the way, and also it would restrict the length of the title. So we thought, okay, let's let's see what it looks like if we put it inside the dollhouse. And it looked great. The only problem here is that it might overlap with holograms. And second, we wanted these titles to rotate around the dollhouse whenever, depending on where the user was standing. So the length of the title would become an issue if it was too long. And then we thought, okay, what, what if we, we make, actually make this like a store display where it's on the glass, like on the window? And it worked beautifully. So we put it there. It has, um, it's, it has a certain offset from the side, but it gives us a ton of length for any title. And also um, it changes uh, when you rotate. Another thing is like, what about behavior here? So this is the shell behavior. So when you spawn, when you when you open up an application, this is the launcher for Playground, um, and as you rotate it, it it the UI rotates around it in order to always face you. So we apply the same rule. So in the dollhouse, if you rotate the dollhouse, the control panel and the title will actually shift towards you. So it's always facing you, always at hand. So even if you walk around. The dollhouse, it will always be facing you and you don't have to like walk back around to where it was before. One of the most characteristic features of the Designing Holograms app is that we used a mixed reality capture of myself to teach and demonstrate these design concepts. Microsoft has two mixed reality capture studios, one in Redmond in Seattle and the other one is luckily enough in San Francisco right next to my office. And apart from these two uh, studios, we license the technology to other studios around the world, like Avatar Dimension in Washington, D.C. and Metastage in L.A. Also, uh, Dimension Studios in London, SK Telecom in Seoul and Volucap in Berlin. So instead of me just chatting uh, about the Mixed Reality Capture Studios, let me show you a quick video so you can see what these studios actually do.
Here are a few technical specs about the, the Mixed Reality Capture Studios. Um, the stage, of course, is, is a limited space, uh, which ha um, has a diameter of more or less eight feet or 2.5 meters in diameter. Um, and height, it's more like three meters or like 10 feet. Um, it has between 64 and 106 RGB and IR cameras to actually do the shots. Um, the source resolution is between 4 megapixels and 12 megapixels at a standard uh, frame rate of 30 frames per second. It has eight high quality directional mics in strategic places, so you can actually record great audio uh, and sound of whatever performance is going on. And the lighting is configurable, so you can have like standard lighting or try and have it fixed from a certain uh, place. In our case, we had a standard lighting because we wanted um, to have control over the directional light inside the application. So once it's captured, um, the process generates keyframed meshes uh, with normals and textures, which can be delivered as an OBJ file, as OBJ files and PNG files for further post-production or ready for playback as an H.264 compressed MP4 file. And you can import these files into Unity, Unreal, uh, Native or WebXR. And of course, depending on those, it will run on Windows, iOS, Mac, Android, Magic Leap and PlayStation VR. And that's me in the studio, um, not as a visitor anymore, but actually as a performer. So let me show you um, a couple takes that we did the designing holograms app you'll notice that um, different parts of the app contain small um, uh, holographic clips of me interacting with holograms or scanning the environment um, and what you see here are six different takes corresponding to those uh, to those scenes um, where I uh, poke a hologram grab something um, explore uh, a hologram or look at my hands and these six videos that you see here are actually taken from one of the RGB cameras that feed into the system to create the holographic uh, me. And then a couple of days later, this is what the Mixed Reality Capture Studio hands over to you as a developer. It's a special MP MP4 file that contains video with audio and the embedded meshes. Also, they give you a player to analyze the takes and, ta and test the results, like uh, the one you, that you see here, where you can see the normals, you can see the, um, the PNG files, the texture files applied to, to each frame. And they also give you an engine plugin. In this case, it was Unity. We were, we were building the Designing Holograms app in Unity. Um, so you need a special plugin to actually uh, play back these takes at runtime. I'd like to show you a couple of very cool tricks that you can do with the mixed reality capture technology. And this, this one is um, head gaze adjustment. And head gaze adjustment allows you to move a captured person's head, but at runtime. Meaning that you could have a capture face towards a user. Or like in this case, we used it to show a panel with surface magnetism um, and how the head can, uh, so it, how the panel can follow the head gaze. So what you see here in Unity is us moving an empty game object as a target for the head, head gaze to look at. As we move the target from side to side, the head of the capture follows. That's pretty cool, right? And we used this trick in a bunch of places inside, inside the app, avoiding us from actually having to, to make new takes, um, record new captures uh, of me looking at different positions without necessarily knowing uh, where I had to look at. This short video shows three tricks we used in many parts of the app. The first one is that we use the mesh from a specific frame to replicate the hand visualization effect. Here we paused the capture playback, used just the hands of that frame, inflated them, and 
overlaid them to create this hand ripple effect. The second one was animating objects to sync with a capture's movement. It's a really tedious process of animating and keyframing, but the results are great. You can now see a capture interacting with non-captured objects, like this window. And the third trick was blending takes. In this video, there's two moments where we blend different captures, and you can actually see them fade in and out over each other. And before implementing this, there was this horrible cut between all takes, which would actually break the illusion of a holographic video. But using the blending between the two, now the transitions are really nice and smooth. Now to talk about the UI creative process, I'd like to hand it over to Martin Wettig, an ex-colleague, a talented and fundamental contributor to the Designing Holograms project. Hello, my name is Martin. I'm a 3D artist and designer and dance team for Designing Holograms. When we started ideating the UI design, um, besides from transporting information, we also wanted to show some of the magic and um, the possibilities that holograms have to offer. And uh, simply showing 2D um, windows and text boxes doesn't feel right in a 3D world and doesn't show much.